Hey, Miami Lakers. Uh, I'm joined by our town manager, Ed Peterman, uh, for our daily COVID-19 uh, update uh, via Facebook Live. We're going to have a question and answer session like we do every single day. Uh, but one of the things that we're doing different today, I think yesterday, uh, we all heard what the CDC said, uh, recommendations that when we're out in public, uh, when we're out going grocery shopping, uh, to wear some sort of face cover. So I'm going to be putting that on now. Uh, when our town manager gives his explanation. It doesn't have to be um, N95 as they're trying to save those, and the manager will get more into that. They're trying to save all the N95 masks uh, for, for folks that are dealing with our seniors, for people in the hospitals, doctors, nurses, first responders, uh, but to wear some sort of face covering, and, I, and, and that's what we want to show you guys today. Uh, and I'll be wearing it now in the next couple minutes to, to make sure uh, that everybody's on the same page, that when you go out uh, to do groceries, uh, to, to get your essentials, try to wear, uh, based on the CDC recommendation, some sort of face covering. So I'm going to put mine on now uh, while the manager gives uh, the daily update. And at some point, uh, we'll, be, we'll be doing some social distancing, which we're doing right now, and it'll be safe to, to make sure that we take those off. Mr. Manager? Yeah, I just wanted to uh, start off by, again, uh, letting you know the number of cases that we have here in the town. The number increased by one. There's one extra case. Uh, starting uh, today and there's so there's 17 mm -hmm. confirmed cases in the town of Miami Lakes that still is about half of 1% of our population so the numbers are really good and that's a testament to all the efforts that our residents are doing by you know rigorous hand washing and social distancing and maintaining uh, small groups instead of large gatherings um, at the special call meeting at the special call meeting that we had uh, Thursday night, there was a measure that was passed and I wanna remind all of our businesses, uh, all of the businesses that deal with food, restaurants, uh, grocery stores, uh, pharmacies, all of those are gonna now be required for anybody handling food to wear a, uh, some kind of face covering. The mayor and I are wearing uh, not N95, but some kind of medical type face covering this is, n this is not even necessary. You can wear a handkerchief, any kind of barrier that will keep the, uh, any kind of uh, droplets coming out of your mouth, keep them from spreading. So that measure passed. We're undergoing a educational campaign through our police officers uh, throughout this weekend and Monday, and it goes into effect. The requirement goes into effect on Tuesday. So the, um, I wanted to talk about that. Uh, also, again, now just to repeat the item that the mayor made reference to a few minutes ago, the Center for Disease Control, the medical guidance, the medical masterminds, the medical experts in our country handed down a recommendation. It says everyone should wear a cloth cover when they go out in public. For example, to a grocery store or to pick up other necessities at pharmacies or what have you. In those environments, it's sometimes difficult to maintain social distancing. So that's why when you're out in public, they recommend that you wear some type of a mouth covering. Now, they don't want you to use the top of the line ones, which are the N95 masks. They want you to reserve those for healthcare professionals. Um, whenever you're out in public, in addition to wearing this, they want you to still maintain that six foot distance but in a, some of those environments it's difficult to do that so they want you to make sure that you uh, you wear the uh, some type of face covering so I just wanted to also finally remind everybody that rigorous hand washing is what you and I can do to make sure that this works we are hopefully getting close to where this uh, curve is going to flatten so you and I have to do our part rigorous hand washing the facial covering, social distancing, and make sure you don't gather in these large groups. Mr. Manager, what's the latest numbers for, uh, for the town of Miami Lakes? 17 people are uh, now confirmed positive in the town of Miami Lakes. So, para hablar español, ya hay, hay 17 personas aquí en nuestra comunidad que tienen el coronavirus. Eh, y también lo que habló el CDC ayer es que eh, es importante cuando salgan a hacer ahí al, al supermarket, ahí, ahí a, a cualquier lugar a coger tus necesidades, 
que tengan algo eh, cubriendo la boca y, y tu nariz cuando están, estén en público. Es muy importante, ya el CDC está hablando de eso, eso porque yo y el administrador lo tenemos en este momento eh, para estar seguro que todo el mundo entienda la importancia de trabajar juntos específicamente cuando vamos al supermarket que hay muchas personas ahí y, y siempre tener algo cubriendo su boca y su nariz. Eh, señor administrador, hay otras partes ahí del, del update que, que tenemos que poner. No, solo recordarle que el tipo de máscara o el tipo de cobertura que tiene en la cara no tiene que ser el tipo eh, que se llama N95. Es el mejor tipo de máscara. Eso la están tratando de reservar y guardar para los hospitales, los bomberos, la policía. Todo lo que están en la, la, eh, tratando con pacientes, eso quieren que mantengan esa máscara disponible para ese tipo de, de, de trabajadores. So just repeating ourselves, uh, CDC came out with some new recommendations uh, just to have some sort of covering over your mouth and your nose when you go out in public. Uh, let's, let's do that for the time being and make sure that we keep flattening the, the curve. Uh, the manager and I are wearing that to make sure that all Miami Lakers see, see us as examples of having this on. It does not have to be an N95 mask as those are, uh, are being reserved for hospitals, doctors, nurses, first responders, uh, people dealing with our elderly community, uh, delivering goods to them uh, and whatnot. But, uh, but the recommendation is when you go to the supermarket, when you go out and about to make sure you wear something covering uh, your mouth and, uh, and your nose. Uh, so Miami Lakers, I'll start reading some of the questions. Make sure you start submitting those as part of our, uh, our commitment to our community to, co to go live every single day of the week uh, with, these answer, uh, with these questions. Let me, uh, let me start grabbing some of those questions right now. Uh, Antonio Lopez uh, Ferrez is asking, uh, are all of our restaurants following uh, these new guidelines and where do we call? I know that there's a certain date that they all have to need, need to abide by, correct? Yeah, the effective date of this measure is Tuesday, so two days from now. Between now and Tuesday, our police officers are doing a great job with our business community and they're going around and providing them the information and, and uh, educating them on what the requirements are. So between now and Tuesday, you're, you are going to see some businesses that still don't have uh, their employees with the mouth coverings. So as of Tuesday afternoon, that's when it's a mandate. And from that point forward, if you see any business, any food service business where the people handling the food are not wearing a face covering, that's where you can notify the police department and they'll send officers out there to make sure to enforce that. Let me see what other questions uh, we have. <coughs> Susana Herrera is asking how many of the 17 are currently under critical care versus, uh, versus home care? Yeah, the problem with the information that we're getting right now is that the number, so far the state reporting is only giving us a certain number for our city, for our town. They only tell us that they're 17. They haven't told us are they uh, mild cases, critical cases. Are they east side of Miami Lakes, west side of Miami Lakes, men, women, young, old? They haven't given us any more demogra demographic information about those cases, just the fact that we have 17. But we, we thankfully, thankfully, have had a very slow increase. We haven't had huge spikes. We have had a, one or two days where there's been two or three from one day to the next, but that's it. The normal progression has been maybe increased by one from one day to the next, and that's a, a tribute to our residents. So, eh, hablando de los 17 casos, hay mucha información que no los dan. Obviamente hay, hay leyes de, de HIPAA que protege al paciente y eso, pero sabemos que en este momento hay 17 eh, casos en nuestra comunidad y tenemos que seguir haciendo esto para estar seguro que, que we flatten the curve. Y, y nada más que para ir para atrás para la, para la respuesta que dio el administrador sobre los restaurantes, eh, tienen hasta el martes, ¿correcto? Sí. El, de, de ahora hasta el martes, la policía eh, que está trabajando uh, junto con nuestros negocios está uh, dando la información sobre cuál va a ser el mandato y las regulaciones. Y el martes por la tarde es cuando es efectivo, cuando tiene que ser de ese punto en adelante, sí es un requisito. So, Gabby Correa is asking, uh, where can we get the mask? And, and Gabby, uh, uh, we were talking about it earlier, the CDC recommend, recommends that it could just be 
uh, anything that covers a cloth that can cover your nose and your mouth. Uh, it could be a handkerchief, a bandana. I mean, you name it, Mr. Manager. What else? Yeah, you you don't you don't have to go anywhere to get the uh, some kind of covering. You have something in your house. You can take an old bed sheet and cut it in a square large enough where you can tie it behind your head, or like the mayor said, a handkerchief, uh, a napkin, a large napkin, anything that you can tie to prevent. And really, and I want to be clear on this. These, the intention of these uh, coverings are not to protect you, right? Because then if that was the reason, if that was the objective, then we would require the higher grade, the N95s. These are really to protect the people that you're around. And if everybody does their part, then we're all protected. So, para decirlo en español, eh, no tienen que ponerse en este tipo de máscara. Pueden simplemente eh, usar... Eh, algo de, de dentro de tu casa que un, un material, pañuelo, un pañuelo eh, para poner sobre tu, tu nariz y tu boca cuando salen al supermarket y salen a otros otras áreas pero no tienen que si no no tienen que salir y, y comprar estos tipos exactamente eh, de máscara pero hay muchas cosas en su casa que se pueden usar para para cubrir la boca y la nariz cuando salgan sí a... el, el objetivo de las máscaras o de la cobertura esta por encima de la boca de la de la cara no es para proteger a uno, es para proteger a todos los que están alrededor de uno. So, si todos nosotros hacemos nuestra parte, todos estamos protegidos. Uh, we have Antonio Lopez uh, uh, Ferrez is asking, do you have numbers how many people have been tested? Uh, and I'm guessing he's asking uh, in our community. I don't have uh, the numbers that they have given us are as far as testing is countywide. I don't know, I'm sorry, I don't have that exact number, but they have not uh, given us any information city by city about how many people ha have been tested. They only have told us how many confirmed cases we have um, with, the, uh, with the virus. So, remember, you can call 305 COVID-19. Uh, there's a testing site right down the street from uh, Miami Lakes, right in Amelia Earhart Park. You call make your uh, appointment remember it is for folks uh, 65 and over with symptoms uh, that can get tested there at Amelia Park eh, 305 COVID-19 es el número de teléfono para ir al Parque Amelia donde se pueden eh, hacer el examen pero tienen que tener eh, eh, ciertas y eh, una cita y síntomas también eh, para ir eh, Melissa Hevia what about them using the gloves and not switching between customers defeats the purpose and exposes uh, all of us even more. I know uh, the, the manager can get deeper into it. Uh, I know restaurants already are highly regulated. I know this was talked about at the meeting and there's already guidelines uh, for switching uh, gloves and, and for, uh, and for wa hand washing that they're highly, uh, that, that all the restaurants in our community have to abide by. Mr. Manager, you wanna chime in? Yeah, I, I would say that everybody should, should assume that anything coming into your home is contaminated. If you go under that assumption that anything coming into your home, whether it be a uh, uh, delivery food from a restaurant, whether it be a package from the supermarket, if you assume that th that is contaminated, then what you need to do is decontaminate it, right? So if you set up a certain area, if, you're, if your home has a garage, set it up in the garage. If not, maybe just outside the, uh, the house or just uh, near the front door where these packages are on the front porch. These packages, you can put them there, take them out of the original container. Uh, once you get the food, wipe it down. Uh, and then once it's the, you've been able to wipe it all down, take it into the house. So, acuérdese, cuando van al supermarket, traigan algo de su casa o de un restaurante, donde sea, acuérdese que tienen, eh, que tienen el pensamiento que, que la, la caja específicamente pueden tener el, el coronavirus y, y estar seguro que usen eh, que disinfectantes para limpiarlo y eso ad, adelante de entrarlo a su casa. Otras recomendaciones, administrador. Sí, si uno tiene una área en su casa, si el garaje o a la entrada a la casa o en el portal de afuera, si uno puede poner como una mesa y cualquier paquete que venga a la casa, si es del supermercado o de un restaurante, Primero, sácalo de, de las bolsas, sácalo del empa, en, el envase de donde viene del, uh, del restaurante o del supermercado. Eh, limpia el envase completo antes de entrarlo a la casa. Eso, tú tienes que asumir que, que, que pensar que todos esos paquetes están contaminados. So, si uno eh, los limpia antes de entrar a la casa, ustedes deben de estar bien. 
Hey, Susanna Herrera brings up a great point talking about uh, keeping common areas, shopping centers, different areas around our community clean. Uh, there are a lot of folks that are, that are going uh, to different places and they're throwing their, their gloves and their mask on, their fl on the floor. Uh, we've been doing a social media campaign. I think there was a, an online publication that picked it up the other day uh, and talked about it. But come on, we're all, we're all in this together. And working together, we'll get through this. So just whenever you're done with your gloves, just throw them in the garbage can. Throw away your mask in the garbage can. Don't throw them out and about because that, that creates other problems for other people. You know what I mean? We're all in this together. And that's, uh, that's one of our town's model, right? Uh, growing beautifully. So la señora Susana Herrera habla específicamente de personas tirando sus máscaras y los guantes en el piso. Y eso cuando terminen yendo a Publix o a Winn-Dixie o a los restaurantes, ten seguro que lo que tiren, que tirenlo en la basura. Eh, estamos trabajando juntos para seguir, no nada más que, que con el coronavirus, pero que la ciudad también siga eh, eh, bonita y echando para adelante. Pero yo sé que la administradora está trabajando, our town manager has been working on doing a, uh, a campaign to make sure that people are following, uh, following those things and understanding that we're in all, all of this, we're, we're in all, all of this together. You know, this is an issue that we have to uh, circumpass uh, working together, Mr. Manager. Yeah, I mean, all of our public spaces, whether it be uh, any of the areas that the town controls, like uh, the little mini parks, if you're walking and doing your exercise, hang on to your mask if you're ready to throw it out or, or if you have garbage. Even though the parks are closed, all of them have garbage cans. And you can just take a few steps in, use the garbage cans. Um, any of the uh, public spaces, like the commercial areas, like the shopping centers, uh, they all have uh, garbage cans. So if you just be conscious about it, and look for the garbage cans, they're usually all of them within just a few uh, feet away from you. Uh, Becky Cubas Ponce uh, is asking, Mr. Manager, should we wear masks when we are in our backyards? No, I, you know, what it talks about is public spaces. If you're in what they call your nucleus, right, your home, the people that you live with, you're, you're very welcome to be without a mask. In fact, if all you're gonna do, you're it's six in the morning and you're gonna go for a walk and you're gonna be walking by yourself or just you, and uh, somebody from your household, you probably don't need a mask, right? So it's public spaces where you're gonna be interacting with other people, and remember what I said a few moments ago, it's not so much to protect you, it's to protect those around you. So even if when you're gonna cross paths, let's say you're walking or jogging through the neighborhood, just step off the sidewalk, step off the, the road, wherever you're walking or jogging. Have Maintain that social distancing, and you should be fine. You should be able to go out in those environments without a mask. It's when you're going to go out in public, where you're going to be in and around other people, the supermarket, uh, shopping centers to go pick up food, the gas station, pharmacies, those kind of areas that the recommendation from CDC, when you're going to be interacting with other people that are not part of your family, part, not part of your immediate nucleus, that's where you should be wearing the, uh, the, the face covering. So, eh, eh, no tiene que ponerse la máscara o nada en, eh, sobre tu cara si no se van de su casa, si están en su patio, si están delante de tu casa, no tienen que tener esto, pero si van a estar en un lugar como un supermarket, tienen que tener eh, algo cubriendo su boca y su nariz. Esas son las recomendaciones de CDC. Eh, Marlene Rogers, Mr. Manager, is asking for those that rent in Miami Lakes, is there anything being worked on uh, regarding helping people out with rent that are impacted with the loss of jobs? Can you please help address these concerns? Well, they're actually. Uh, it's more on the income side, right? So if there's people that are, whether they're renters or owners, right? If there's people that have had their income uh, uh, significantly impacted by losing their job or being furloughed or working less hours or anything of that nature, remember that the federal government has passed a lot of legislation. We're in the process now of developing a PowerPoint to put it in simplified terms. Everything I've seen with a lot of the trying to explain the, the legislation has been overwhelming. It's just too much information. So we're trying to put together a very simple PowerPoint that's going to walk you through step by step all of the different programs that are out there. Soon, hopefully early next week, we'll have it ready to go. We're going to put it on the home page of our website and that should give both our staff members, we're developing it to explain it to our staff members, and then also our residents, everybody will be able to benefit from that information. We're going to try and make it as simple as possible and let you know exactly what's available. So la pregunta era si hay un programa eh, trabajando con la persona que están eh, rentando su apartamento, casa, 
eh, sus viviendas, que si hay algo que lo puede ayudar, yo sé que hay diferentes programas federales, yo sé que el condado en este momento no está procesando the, uh, the evictions, correct, Mr. Manager, uh -huh. eh, en, en este momento, eh, pero lo que le estamos pidiendo a las personas también, vamos a poner información sobre estos programas federales de condado y el estado, pero también llama a, eh, a su landlord, call los dueños de, del alquiler donde están, llama, llámalos a ellos, llama a las personas que están trabajando contigo con su mortgage, you know, estoy seguro que los llamen desde ahora eh, y empieza teniendo esas discusiones y, y hay eh, esas conversaciones y, y yo sé que la semana que viene el administrador va a estar dando una lista de diferentes programas eh, que hay di, disponibles eh, para ayudar a las personas en nuestra comunidad. Uh, Marlene Rogers is asking, uh, what about our regular mail and mailboxes and, and rental apartments, uh, Mr. Manager? Well, that's a public space, right? Because you could run into other people in the building. So in those spaces, you should be wearing the mask, yes. En el área donde cuando uno baja, si uno vive en un edificio de apartamento, cuando uno baja a buscar el correo y eso, es un espacio público. So, ahí va, pueden haber dos, tres, cuatro personas que no son parte de, su, de, de tu casa. So, en ese ambiente debería de tener puesto algún tipo de cobertura sobre la boca. Yo sé que el, el I think the CDC has talked about there hasn't been any evidence uh, of coronavirus passing through uh, mail, uh, but at the same time take those proper precautions like the manager talked about earlier disinfect things, you know, wash things down, you know, store, put them in your garage, put them in an area. I know I read an article yesterday uh, where people have like this, uh, right when you come into their, their homes, they have this little area where they kind of decontaminate everything uh, just in case and they're taking the, the proper uh, precautions. So there are a lot of folks doing that. So maybe that's a good thing for us just to start getting used to until we flatten the curve and we get past the uh, this issue. Uh, Maria Figueroa, she's asking, can you talk about uh, the community, community viral uh, load and the importance of everyone wearing face uh, covering? I, I, I'm thinking she's asking uh, uh, the community spread, right? Is there a community spread in, in, in our area uh, and the importance of wearing these mask coverings in, uh, in, out and about? Yeah, I, I think that almost all of the, uh, the transmissions now in the country probably, and for sure in South Florida, are not community spread. So it's from person to person. They're not necessarily people who have brought the disease from somewhere else, either in the country or from uh, some other country from outside the, the US. So I believe that um, the majority of the spread now is community spread from one person to another here in South Florida. So Luli and Chris uh, MacArthur are asking, if we get cabin fever and feel like going out for a car ride without uh, intending to get down from the car, is that breaking the safer at home policy? Please explain. No, actually, uh, my wife, who is really, she hasn't left the house in three weeks. She was getting a little bit of that cabin fever. And a few days ago, we did the, that exact same thing. We, we got in her car, which ha hadn't been driven in a few days. So we drove her car. We drove around the town. We uh, just drove the streets, the main streets, checking out uh, some of the public uh, areas. And then we just drove back. It took us about 20 or 30 minutes, but it got us both out of the house, and we both felt better for it. But it, we were maintained the uh, in the confines of our car, so we weren't exposing anybody, and no, we were not able to be exposed to anybody else. So la pregunta de Luli, Luli Chris McCarter era si si pueden salir en su carro, viajar por la comunidad, y si eso eh, está contra nuestro eh, ley de safer at home. Eh, lo que dijo el administrador, no, es algo que se puede viajar eh, por la comunidad en su carro sin, sin bajarse a ver diferentes cosas y eso, los parques. Eh, pero eso es algo que hay muchas personas lo están haciendo porque no quieren eh, quedándose en la casa tanto tiempo, se están eh, aburriéndose, de verdad, so, están saliendo en su carro, pero sin salir de carro, viajando en diferentes áreas. Eso es algo que dijo el administrador, se puede seguir haciendo. Sí, su, su carro es como una extensión de su casa. Mientras que uno no se baje, no eh, esté expuesto a otra persona, eh, eso es perfectamente bien. Uh, Demar, Demaris uh, Calzadilla, Calzadilla is asking, please repeat, repeat the senior food delivery phone number 
Uh, so there's two there's two programs in our community. There's one where you call uh, 311 uh, directly, and, and the manager will get into that a little bit more because he has a staffer that he's assigned at City Hall that is working with, uh, with seniors directly for 311. And then also there's some nonprofits uh, working with us, uh, Giving Gators and the Brianna Vergara Foundation is doing weekly uh, grocery deliveries to to people's uh, to seniors' homes in our community that are that are in need. Uh, but Mr. Manager, you want to talk about the 311 process real yeah. quick? If you know the senior or if you are a senior uh, that is in need of food delivery, you can call 311 directly yourself and register your senior or yourself for the program, or you can call our town hall at 305-364. 6100 and as for Ashley if she's not the one who picks up the phone they will get a message to Ashley and she will call you back and she will get all of your information and make sure that you or your senior gets registered for those meal for that meal program So como dijo el administrador pueden llamar al ayuntamiento de 305 364 eh, 6100 eh, y hablar con Ashley y pedir por Ashley, ella te los va a ayudar sobre el proceso de 311 eh, para recibir comida eh, caliente todos los días de la semana. Entonces, también hay un programa que estamos trabajando con unos eh, non-profits en nuestra comunidad, Giving Gators and Brianna Vergara Foundation, que si son eh, personas mayores que lo necesitan, traen eh, lo, los mandados a su casa una vez a la semana. Eh, y eh, mándelos un mensaje aquí y, y tenemos las listas trabajando eh, allá en, en el ayuntamiento. Elia Hernández uh, is asking, ¿es verdad que esta semana es que entra eh, es la, la más alta y después empieza a mejorar? Uh, Elia Hernández is asking uh, that if this upcoming week is going to be the highest rate of coronavirus infections and the week after we're going to start seeing that curve going down. That's your question, Mr. Manager. Sí, eso yo lo he oído dos o tres veces. Que esta es la semana, o la semana que viene es la semana y eso va cambiando. Este virus, como es nuevo, no se conoce mucho, no, no tiene un, lo que dicen, un track record, no tiene un historial de cómo va a funcionar o cómo se va a eh, eh, desarrollar. So, yo... Lo mejor que yo, la mejor sugerencia que le doy es que no piensen en eso. Sigan, sigan con manteniéndose en su casa. Si salen, pónganse la, una careta y lávense las manos continuamente. Si ustedes se mantienen haciendo eso, ustedes ya verán cuando esa curva empiece ya a nivelarse. Entonces todos vamos a estar mejor. So one of the, the, one of the things about this issue is it's a novel coronavirus, meaning uh, it's new. It's never been seen before. So we don't know uh, when exactly that curve will be flattened. Uh, we'll start seeing some normalcy, hopefully soon. But the reality is it's a novel virus, meaning that uh, our scientists have never seen it before. So we just got to continue being prepared, doing our part, making sure we're following CDC recommendations uh, and guidelines and ensuring that we keep working together to get past this. Uh, Soraya de Jesus is asking how many residents uh, with COVID-19? Uh, we spoke about this earlier in our briefing today, but the number right now is 17. So it increased by one from yesterday. So yesterday we had 16. Now this morning, this morning's report shows 17 cases. And uh, that uh, incrementation is really going at a very slow pace, which is a great thing. And it's a testament to how good and how strong our uh, residents are working. So we have a question from Connie Pena. I uh, don't know if you addressed this before, but I tried to buy masks. Earliest availability was end of April. Do you know anywhere we can purchase them and get them today? Well, Connie, great to hear from you. She's uh, my uh, high school and grade school uh, classmate, and uh, we actually even share the same exact birthday. So, uh, Connie, the, what we said earlier is you don't have to have any of these medical grade or medical type of uh, uh, mask. You can wear anything that will cover your mouth. So you can wear a handkerchief, a nice scarf. You can wear uh, even like an old uh, sheet that you cut. Anything. You, so you have already in your house something that will work. It doesn't have to be a medical type uh, mask. In fact, the high grade medical type mask, which is called the N95, the CDC does not want you to use that because they want to make sure that they save those for the healthcare workers. 
So, la pregunta era, ¿dónde se puede encontrar eh, las máscaras? Hay muchas personas que dicen que lo están buscando eh, y que no hay eh, disponible hasta la, 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 el, el abril, la, la última semana de abril, pero como dijo el administrador, se pueden hacer las máscaras en, en su casa, lo que dice el CDC, eh, simplemente cogiendo un... Una, eh, ¿Cómo se dice la palabra esa? Un, una, un pañuelo. Un pañuelo. Eh, se puede coger un pañuelo, taparse la, la nariz y la boca. Eh, y eso es lo que dice el CDC en este momento, porque las otras máscaras se están utilizando para los hospitales, para las personas, para los doctores, los bomberos, la policía, las personas llevando comida a, a, lo, a lo, los seniors de nuestra comunidad. Eh, UC Valdez, uh, Mr. Manager, is asking: ¿Can we go for a walk around our property or our rented places? Uh, well, I, I know the last one on the common areas, I know you, you recently addressed that with a, an emergency order. Yeah, the common areas like uh, tennis courts, basketball courts, uh, the barbecue areas, pools, those are all closed. So you can go out from your development and go on the sidewalk and just go for a nice uh, walk around your neighborhood or a jog. Uh, you can do all that. Just make sure when you're going to cross paths with somebody else who's doing the same, Make sure you just separate and maintain that social distancing away from the other uh, walkers or joggers. Maria eh, Barreto is asking, please mention the webinar for small business. It will be helpful for local businesses. Mr. Manager, is that available on our social media and our website and all that, the, the webinar that happened the other day? Yeah, I, it's, that information, If I'll check when I get, uh, when I get back uh, to my computer. If it's not on our website, Uh, I'll put it on the website, but I'm almost sure that it is, and it's also it should be available, and I'll look to see, make sure that it is on our social media. Hay mucha información sobre los pequeños eh, empresas aquí en nuestra comunidad que hicimos ayer eh, lo que se llama un webinar eh, en el internet y el administrador lo va a poner en el website de la ciudad y en social media para estar seguro que todo el mundo eh, puede ver la información y entender todo lo que está pasando con las leyes nuevas. Eh, con los tax returns, los taxes, todo eso. So, la información va a estar eh, disponible también. Eh, Mariel Abreu is asking, will Miami Lakes uh, local government encourage Miami Lakes rental property owners to waive late fees for delayed rent payments this month? Well, I mean, we're not going to get in that uh, in the middle of that tenant uh, landlord discussion, but that's something that you should do early on. If you're having a problem, what I can tell you is that evictions have been stopped. So you, there's no evictions that are happening uh, in Miami-Dade anywhere in the county at this point. So, but what I would do is don't wait till the uh, the, the, the the late payments, the uh, the inability to make uh, rental payments gets too far down. The earlier you engage in that conversation with I, with uh, your landlord, the better. I, I know that the major property owners here in Miami Lakes are all willing to uh, work with their tenants. They don't want to lose these tenants. They know that many of these tenants are long-term tenants. So they're willing to do their part to make sure that we all get through this together. Y si están teniendo eh, cualquier problema con el alquiler, eh, la renta, esté seguro que hablen con, lo, con los landlords, con los dueños. Eh, ahora no, no esperen a otro punto. Yo, estoy, eh, yo pienso que muchos de ellos, eh, como dijo el administrador, van a trabajar eh, con la comunidad, porque de, de verdad saben que esto es un problema de, de más grande, esto no es como un huracán o algo así, esto es un problema que en realidad que nunca se ha visto en la historia eh, moderna de, de nuestro país. Estoy seguro que muchos, eh, y pienso que muchos de, lo, de los eh, dueños de las propiedades van a estar trabajando eh, con las personas en nuestra comunidad. Maria Figueroa is asking, can you please tell our seniors not to believe all the miracle cures they hear on Spanish language radio? Uh, putting a, high, a hair dryer up to your nose is not a good idea. Sí, eh, yo no sé qué es lo que están diciendo en la prensa, en, eh, a veces de, a través de la internet dicen alguna barbaridad de que este virus no tiene cura. No tiene cura. So no traten alguna barbaridad de que están uh, hablando en la internet. Lo más importante es, si tú empie te empiezas a sentir algunos, algunos síntomas como fiebre, una tos que no se te va, otros síntomas, eh, eh, dolor de cabeza, llame a su médico primario. Su médico primario es la, la mejor eh, persona a quien tú le puedes pedir eh, información y le dice de, de tu caso qué es lo que tú te estás sintiendo y sigue, por favor, 
el uh, consejo de su médico. Like the manager said, there's a lot of rumors, there's a lot of things going on. Uh, don't get your information off of Twitter, off of Facebook, off of any internet website. Make sure you get it directly from the CDC, you get it directly from the Florida Health Department, uh, from the folks that are working on this every single day. You follow the recommendations, follow their guidelines. I know there's a lot of stuff going on uh, out there in the different social media platforms, but the real information is on the CDC's website, is on the uh, Florida Health Department website. And if you don't know how to find those, you can go on our website, miamilakes-fl.gov forward slash coronavirus. Uh, Marlene Rogers is asking, are people that have no health insurance, uh, will they be treated if they need to go to the hospital? Everything I've seen so far, I'm not sure about that, but everything I've seen so far is that anybody dealing with, whether it's testing or treatment, dealing with the COVID-19, they're definitely never going to be denied service. So I, I believe that most of those expenses are going to be covered. And a lot of the, even if you are covered by insurance, a lot of the insurance companies are waiving co-pays and things of that nature. So don't ever hesitate to seek help because you don't have insurance or you're afraid of the co-pays or whatever. The most important thing is your health. So please don't ever let that be uh, an obstacle to uh, seeking help. Mr. Manager, repeat that in Spanish. I think that's a very, very important uh, uh, thing to be heard in regards to, to people's health. Yeah, la, la mayoría de la compañía de seguro están ayudando a su paciente, a sus clientes, con no, uh, cobrándole el copay, Eh, y ese tipo de cosas. So, por favor, si usted tiene seguro o no tiene seguro, todos los hospitales, aunque tú tengas seguro o no, te están tratando. Si tú piensas que usted tiene el coronavirus, por favor, no espere. Vaya al hospital o llame al 911. O si tiene un médico, llame a su médico primero. Si tiene algún médico, si tiene seguro. Llame al médico y sigue la sugerencia del, de su médico. Uh, Christina Scavuzzo is asking, uh, is there a curfew in Miami Lakes? And Miami Lakers, I know we're starting to wrap up. I don't see too many more questions. So if, you, if you're watching right now and you do have questions, make sure you, you put them in right now. I want to make sure we get to all those before we uh, turn off our Facebook Live uh, for the day. So, Mr. Manager, that question? Yeah, curfew is something that's probably asked every, almost every single time that we come to do one of these briefings. Some of the cities around us have implemented curfews. I know the city of Miami has, the city of Hialeah has. We have chosen not to do a curfew, and we didn't do that haphazardly. When we were considering it, I went straight to the major of our police department and asked, will a curfew help you in all of your enforcement efforts? And he clearly said that no, it won't make a difference. We don't have problems like following a hurricane with our infrastructure, like. Uh, electricity's out and the whole neighborhood is dark and we're afraid of crime in that neighborhood because of that. We don't have any of those problems. We don't have businesses that are open. Everything is shut down. So any power that the police department has without a curfew, a curfew will not give them any extra power to enforce our laws, enforce the safety and security that we uh, luckily enjoy here in Miami Lakes. We're one of the safest uh, cities in the whole state of Florida. So our police department does a great job. They do it a, a great job in conjunction with our residents, and they believe that a curfew is not needed in Miami Lakes. So in this moment, there is no toque de queda here in the city of Miami Lakes. In the city of Miami Lakes, there is no toque de queda. The administrator, we have talked with the chief of the police here in our community, and he thinks that in this moment, it is not necessary in the city of Miami Lakes. Uh, Mr. Manager, Rosie... Uh, oh, give me a second. Rosie Morales is making a good point talking about uh, how part of the uh, whole federal bill uh, you have you have the government paying the federal government paying for for a lot of the copays non and for people who are not insured to make sure that they get tested yeah. and they get treatment. Uh, she's giving an example how there's healthcare companies waiving copays and deductibles like yes. how you talked about. Yeah, that's uh, what we said earlier. Now we have Soraya de Jesus. Was the schedule for the testing sites? Uh, are they open on weekends? Soraya, uh, again, I would call 305-COVID-19, uh, 305-COVID-19. Uh, uh, call them, get all the information directly from them. Uh, there are two sites. There's one at Amelia Earhart Park, and there is another one at, uh, at Hard Rock Stadium. So make sure that you call 305-COVID-19 and get all the information uh, from there. 
Uh, Ovilia Garcia, how about if a person has a fever and, and a cold and they don't want to get tested? Uh, how about if it gets worse? I think they should get tested if there's a fever. Yeah, I mean, if you're showing symptoms uh, that, uh, and everybody's heard them over and over, we've been at this for over a month. So everybody has heard uh, on the news, through our briefings, a lot of the uh, internet information is provided. If you have any of those symptoms, the most important thing is call your doctor. Call your medical professional. You tell them exactly what you're feeling and let that medical professional tell you if you should get tested or not. So they'll be able to sort through what you're telling them and, sh and sort through what you're uh, describing and let them give you the advice of a professional, a medical professional. Don't let your abuela tell you, don't let your cousins tell you, don't let some uh, article on the internet tell you, don't let uh, something on CNN or Fox News. Make sure that you talk to your medical professional, tell them exactly what you're feeling, and then follow that person's advice. Eh, como dijo el administrador, si no te sientes bien, tienes una fiebre, eh, te aseguro que habla con tu doctor, eh, habla con ellos, Mi, ve al website del CDC, eh, y si eres una persona de mayor de 75, de se, seten, Ses, 65. 65 años, eh, te aseguro eh, que el examen esté ahí, llama el 305 COVID-19, eh, que tienen el, el examen gratis, eh, pero obviamente llame inmediatamente a tu doctor eh, de primaria. Uh, we don't see any other uh, 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 Facebook questions, Miami Lakers. Again, our commitment is to do this seven days a week. Make sure that you all uh, get all the information uh, directly from, uh, from your town government. I know there's a lot of info going on all over the place, uh, but we want to make sure you hear directly from us. Uh, as to what's happening in our community every single day, seven days a week. We'll be coming live tomorrow again. I don't see any other questions. Uh, we'll give you about another 30 seconds to ask any questions if you got it before we, uh, before we log off. But make sure the main takeaway today, la, la, la cosa primaria de hoy, is, that, uh, is to make sure that when you're out in public, you follow the CDC recommendations. Uh, which means you can wear one of these. You can wear a handkerchief, a, uh, a bandana over your mouth and your nose. That is the latest CDC uh, recommendations that came out, and that ensures uh, that we uh, flatten the curve, hopefully sooner rather than later, and we get past this together. So, again, I don't see any other. Mr. Manager, was there anything else you no, wanted to add? No, I think the, that covers everything that we wanted to say today. Mm -hmm. So, Miami Lakers, uh, call us. Let us know if there's anything we could be a service. 305-364-6100. Uh, reach out to us. We are here for you from our city council, our staff, our volunteers. Our amazing community is coming together. And remember, in these tough times, it's important that we unite, we keep working together, and together we will get past this. Take care, Miami Lakers, and we'll see you tomorrow.